Hi, I'm Kim, the lab director, manager, sorry, at Cypress Point Surgical, and today I'm going to go over a few things with you, um, how to order some laboratory specimens, how to correct, correctly label, a little bit about navigating CPSI system. I know lots of people are unfamiliar with it, so I'll go over that a little bit. Remember, if you have any questions or you need anything, our number is 6170, so you can call us anytime if you have any questions about anything. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the first thing, ordering in CPSI, lots of things go by the patient's account number, so make sure that you're on the correct one. Sometimes patients can have multiple accounts, so if you search by their name, make sure that you look at the date and that you're choosing the, the right account when you're trying to order your tests. Um, you're going to go under the patient account number, you're going to do order entry, and then choose laboratory, and then th there's going to be a pop-up box that's gen generated. It's kind of like the most common things that you would look for. Um, if your test that you're trying to order is on that list, go ahead and click it. If not, there's a search box about halfway down the page on the left. Once you choose all the tests, um, if you've already collected your test, go ahead and hit collect. It's going to prompt you for a date and a time and to enter your initials. You'll click on verify with labels. Um, you may be prompted for information about the source, so if you're ordering a culture or you're ordering um, there's a few other things, but mostly it's going to be cultures. It's going to prompt you. Um, make sure you enter that completely and as accurately as possible. We use that information directly from what you tell us to enter it on our, on our side. Um, you can also hit to edit the order to change the physician's name. Maybe you have a consulting physician coming in and you want to change the ordering physician. If you just hit that edit button, um, you can also make it stat, or you can change the schedule. Maybe you're ordering it for tomorrow and not for today. Or maybe it's for two days from now. If it's a drug level, you know, maybe it's for 11 o'clock tonight. Um, you can go ahead and hit edit and then hit verify. Um, if you haven't already collected your specimen, just hit, go ahead and hit verify. And um, you can do the collection piece later on. Like, say, if it's a drug level, you can do it later that night when you actually draw it. Um, so that's kind of a little piece about ordering. Again, if you have questions, you need help, assistance, call us. We'll be glad to give you some information over the phone. We, we, all three of us, pretty, pretty good at ordering. So um, don't be afraid to call us and ask us. Um, let's go on to drawing. This is something that we have a little bit of issue with. I think because lots of people don't really have a lot of experience doing it, you will be doing drawing at this hospital. So we want to make sure that. Um, you know how to do it and that we get a good specimen. Your, your results only going to be as good as the specimen that we receive in the lab. Um, so first of all, the preferred spot for a venipuncture is in the AC. The hand, the wrist, those are not the preferred spot. Start at the AC. Start there and work your way down. As opposed to what you guys are probably used to with the IV is start low and work up. No. For the venipuncture, start high at the AC and make your way down. Don't draw above an IV. Don't. If you can't avoid it, call us. Um, you want to avoid um, areas that are bruised. Don't put the tourniquet on, walk away for five minutes. You know, put the tourniquet on and uh, go ahead and draw. Don't fist pump. You know, one tight fist is fine, but none of this, you know, I see patients doing it all the time. Just hold it tight one time like that and that's it. Um, those are kind of some basics. Again, if you have questions, you need help you need instruction, you need practice, please come see us. We'll be more than happy to um, give you some instruction. Um, order of draw is another thing that I see people doing not incorrectly, so we're going to go over that real quick. Um, when, you're, when you're doing your draws, you always do your blood culture first if you have one. Lots of times we don't have those here, but if you do, you want to do those first. And then it's going to be blue, red, serum separator, which is like the red one with the yellow around it, a green top, pink, and then your purple top. So blue is always first, then red, then your pink or green or lavender. For your blood culture collections, you want to clean in concentric circles with the alcohol prep for 30 seconds. You're going to let that dry, and then you're going to clean with chloroprep for two minutes. Let that dry. Then you're going to perform your venipuncture. If you retouch the site after you clean, you need to start over again. We don't want those places contaminated. If a physician asks for a set, you're going to draw 
an aerobic and an anaerob anaerobic culture. If he asks for two sets, you're going to draw those. The kind of rule of thumb is 15 minutes at a different site. So you're going to draw the aerobic, the anaerobic, say left AC, and then you're going to wait 15 minutes, go to the right AC, clean and prep that area, and draw from there. Make sure that you date those, time those, and that you put the site on there as well. That's very important. Um, want to make sure that those places aren't contaminated when we're clean, you know, that's why we're cleaning them. Um, let's talk about fill. How, how, how much, you know, do you need in those tubes? Um, I've seen people throwing them away because they don't think they have enough and then re-sticking the patient. Really, if we get about a mil of sample in those tubes, we can do just about anything with them. So never throw your sample away because you don't think you have enough. The only exception to that is the blue top. The blue top has to be filled completely. Um, there's an anticoagulant in those tubes, and there's a ratio of blood to anticoagulant. It's nine to one. Underfilled samples, so if you have it half filled, if you have a mill in there, if you have it under the, there is a little arrow on the tube. If it's underfilled, we're not gonna accept it. It's gonna be rejected. No, like I said, all your other tubes, your red, your green, your serum separators, your lavender, if you have about a mill in there, I can do almost anything. If you're unsure, ask us, call us. That's what we're here for. Bring it to us and show me. You know, I mean, I can look at it most of the time and go, yeah, that's not enough, or yes, it's plenty, it's fine. The blue tops definitely have to be filled all the way. So keep that in mind when you're drawing, especially starting those IVs, if you're doing your blue top first, sometimes air gets in it from the tubing and you may not have it filled all the way. So look at it, you may not need to draw a second one and trash that first one, um, especially when the IV starts. <clears throat> Again, if you have questions, call us, let us know. We'll be glad to give you a demonstration or instruction. All right, labeling. We have chart labels available. We have these, we have these in the patient's charts. Okay, so what you do is you initial, you date it, and put the time on there. You're gonna take that label, put it on the tube, like this. Notice that I've left a window here open so that when we get the sample, we can see it, what it looks like. We need to be able to visualize and look at these. I'll show you another example of what not to do. Okay, so this is what we don't want because the label's covering the open part of the tube and then this side's labeled as well. So once we fill it, I can't see how far it's full. I can't see the sample. So we wanna make sure that we have an open window like this one so that we can see the sample when we get it in the lab. Again, date and time on those and your initials. You wanna, once you label your tubes, put them in the biohazard bag and bring those to the lab. Any unlabeled sam samples, um, are going to be rejected. Donna, it doesn't matter what it is. If it's unlabeled, then I'm going to reject it. If you label the bag and not the tube, I'm going to reject it. Label the tubes. Label them at the bedside. You want to check the patient's name, medical record number, and their date of birth on the patient's armband versus these labels. Any, any discrepancy in those, you need to bring that to the attention of your supervisor and see where they want to go with, their, with that. Um, make sure that you're checking it. We don't want to get any mislabeled specimens. Um, all right, urine cultures. So sometimes we collect their urine cultures after the laboratory is gone. There's a couple of things you can do to um, make sure that those specimens stay good. Um, we have this little kit, which I already opened. Comes like this. This is what it looks like. And I have us a fake urine sample here, so I'm going to show you how to do it. So one thing you can do to preserve this specimen after laboratory hours is to just stick it in the refrigerator, bring it to the lab, stick it in the fridge. Make sure it's labeled and we'll take care of it tomorrow. Um, you can also use these urine culture preservative kits. 
they're pretty easy. Of course, you want to wear gloves. It's not a real urine, but you just take this little straw, put it in here, pop this on. This little gray top has a vacuum in it, so it's going to pull it right up into there. Make sure you have your little gray top label. Stick that in your biohazard bag. Bring it to the lab. When you order your urine culture, it's going to prompt you to what type of a specimen it is. Is it from a cysto? Is it a foley calf? Is it a clean catch? Is it random? Be accurate with that. When we order these, we don't perform these in house, but when we order them in um, our reference labs computer, it asks us what the source is. Now, Entering the source correctly is important because that lets the laboratory know if a pathogen should be there or not. So obviously we would expect more from more, more I guess, junk or trash or um, in a clean catch urine or a random than we would want to see like in a cysto. So if you tell me that it's a cysto, they're going to work up every little nasty bug that they find as opposed to if it's a random, they may just say, oh, it's normal, you know, you're a genital flora. And that's important, especially to some of our urology staff here. They want to know what it is. So make sure, and it's going to prompt you and ask you exactly what is it. You'll have four or five choices, maybe six. And um, so just choose the one that's the best that you can. Okay, I think that's it, Rachel, for that part.